Here's the link if you want to review the requirements on OSHA's website yourself. Employees need to be able to ex exit the trench every 25 feet via a ladder or other means if the trench is deeper than 4 feet. Also, if it's deeper than 4 feet, we must test the atmosphere to make sure that it's safe. Let's remember that water accumulation can be very dangerous, so we need to make sure that we have a way of handling any water that might accumulate in the trench. Keep spoil piles at least two feet away from the edge of an excavation to protect employees from loose rock or soil that might fall in on them. If you can't do maintain that two feet rule, talk to your supervisor about an alternative method. Remember that a competent person should inspect a trench daily and when changes occur to make sure it's still safe. Remember that we're not permitted to cross the trench unless we have a walkway, and if the trench is deeper than six feet, we also must have guardrails. No protective system is required in a trench less than five feet, meaning we don't need to slope it or shore it, but we need to make sure that we have the competent person make sure there's no potential for cave-in. We're always responsible for the cave-in, no matter what the depth. If the trench is five feet or more in depth, we have two options for protecting employees who might be in that trench, sloping or using a trench box. There are four options for sloping. Option one is the only one that we typically use. Talk to your supervisor if you wanna look at one of the other options. Option one for sloping says that all trenches five feet in depth and over shall be sloped to one and a half horizontal to one vertical per below. This gets more inefficient the deeper we go. For example, a six foot wide trench, 20 foot deep, uh, would be 66 feet at the top. We can calculate that by taking the depth times three and adding the trench width at the bottom.